Hi scholars, welcome back to Read Aloud. We're gonna be finishing up part of our Dolphins at Daybreak story. We're on part three. Today we get to read chapter five and six of our fiction text. We know that that means the story is made up, but we found that the author has found a way to incorporate some real life information and facts in our text. Yesterday, we had the challenge of finding out Annie's motivation. We had to figure out why did Annie want to stay under the water? You guys did a great job of meeting the criteria for success. Using the character's name, describing what the character wants, and adding your text evidence. You guys told me that Annie wanted to stay under the water because she wanted to keep finishing the riddle. Annie said in the text on page 29, but we haven't solved the riddle, said Annie. That lets us know Annie wants to solve the riddle and she doesn't wanna leave until she's done it. Today, we're reading chapter five and six. Chapter five is called Two Eyes. What's a ship's log, said Annie. It's a diary of an ocean trip, said Jack. He peered at the computer screen and read a log entry. This is taking place Monday, July 5th. Hey, that was just last week, said Jack. He read further. Collected rock and shell samples. Here you can see the entry into the journal. Monday, July 5th, it says they collected rock and shell samples. Wonder what that's about. Ooh, we've got more notes from our diary. Mapped ocean floor, found tiny crack in hull. This is like your notebook, said Annie. Yeah, the oceanographer was writing notes on the computer, said Jack. Jack and Annie read further. Tuesday, July 6th, crack has widened. Must return to reef soon. A crack where, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. He read further. Where do you guys think the crack is? Let's find out. Wednesday, July 7th, more tiny cracks cannot be fixed. Heading back to reef today. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good, said Jack. He read further. Thursday, July 8th, defective sub, return to reef, leave for helicopter to transport, to junkyard. Defective means broken, right, said Annie. Yep said Jack. So this sub is broken, said Annie. Yep, said Jack, and it is waiting to be taken away by a helicopter to a junkyard. Yikes, said Annie. Hmm, do you think there should be inside of that submarine if it's broken? Now we really have to get back, said Jack. Let's try pressing the waves picture. said Annie. She pressed the waves picture on the computer screen. The mini sub began to rise up slowly. Oh, good, said Jack. Say, whew, they can relax now. They're rising up to safety. The sub went past a small coral mountain. It went past schools of fish and waving plants. Oh, gasped Annie. Jack gasped too. Two eyes were staring out from behind a giant sea plant. Let's talk about Annie for a second though. We read yesterday that Annie wanted to stay under the water, but now she changed her mind and wants to go up and out of the water? Why did Annie do that? Let's think about what Annie wanted and what Annie is feeling. Well, we know that now she's trying to get out and she just asked on page 33, so this sub is broken, right? And I know that if you're in something that's broken, that's protecting you, you wanna get away from there and out so that you can stay safe. So Annie wants to stay safe and thinks that this button, or of wa this water button will save her. Annie wants to get out so that her and her brother are safe. Let's keep reading. What do you think those two eyes are? They looked human, except they were as big as golf balls. 
The sub moved past the giant plant. Jack breathed. <sighs> A sigh of relief. What? Who's? sputtered Annie. Don't ask, said Jack. They stared back at the plant. Just then, a long arm came out from behind it. Then another arm came out. Then another and another and another and another and another. What has this many legs and lives under the ocean? Jack and Annie stared in horror at a giant octopus. You got it. It's coming after us, said Annie. Slowly, the octopus crept through the water. Its eight arms reached for the mini sub. That's the end of chapter five. I could only imagine what Annie and Jack are feeling. They have this octopus coming after them and then they're in a broken submarine. They must be feeling so scared and worried. Mm, chapter six, this has a clever title. It's called C-R-A-C-K. That spells crack. Mm. The octopus hugged the mini sub. Each of its eight arms had two rows of suckers. The suckers stuck to the window. The mini sub stopped. The octopus stared at Jack and Annie with huge human-like eyes. I don't think it wants to hurt us, whispered Annie. It's just curious. I, I'm going to research it, said Jack. Let's stop and think about why Jack is deciding to do research. Hmm. In the text it says, I, I'm going to research it, said Jack, just after Annie said she doesn't think the octopus wants to hurt them. It's just curious. I know Jack wants to stay safe and he thinks that he and Annie are in danger. He wants to double check. That's why he's gonna do his research. His hands shook as he flipped through the pages of the ocean book. He found a picture of an octopus and read aloud, the octopus tends to be a gentle, shy creature. Sometimes though, curiosity gets the best of it and it comes out of hiding. Aw, see, I told you, he's shy, said Annie. She yelled to the octopus, hi, I'm Annie, he's Jack. Oh, brother, moaned Jack. He read further, but the octopus has huge strength. Each of its arms or tentacles have many suckers, which act like rubber suction cups. It is nearly impossible to free an object from their grasp. Oh, great, said Jack. We'll never get rid of this thing. Why would Jack say that? Why does Jack say, oh, great? Hmm, think about what we know from the text. Why would Jack say, oh, great? Well, he's saying that kind of sarcastically, and we know that Jack wants to be free, let's figure out why he would say, oh, great. Well, we just read on page 37, the author says, it is nearly impossible to free an object from their grasp. So Jack knows it's so difficult to get away from an octopus. So he's thinking, oh, great, we're never gonna do this. Jack wants the octopus to let go and now he's feeling kind of frustrated and sarcastic. Let's keep reading to see if he can figure out a way to be free. Just then, Jack felt a drop hit his arm. Water. He looked up at the ceiling. Uh-oh, said Annie. A thin crack ran along the ceiling. Smaller cracks branched out from it. Water dip, dripped, excuse me, water dripped from the cracks. We found the cracks, said Annie. The octopus better let go before the whole ceiling breaks, said Jack. Let go, please, said Annie to the octopus. The creature blinked as if trying to understand her. Please, 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 say it with me. Please, please, please. Please, she shouted. Come on, said Jack. It doesn't care if you're polite. 
Well, why would Annie be shouting at the octopus? Hmm, you can go ahead and stop the video to let me know. Why would Annie shout at the octopus? I agree with you. Annie says, let us let go, please, please, Annie shouted at the octopus. That lets me know that Annie wants the octopus to let go of her. She's thinking if the octopus keeps squeezing, the submarine that we're in is going to break. I want the octopus to let go, so I'm going to shout at it. The octopus blinked at Jack. Get out of here, Jack yelled at it. Now, beat it, scram, go! The octopus shot a cloud of black liquid into the water and disappeared into the dark cloud. Its long tentacles trailed through the water. The mini sub started to rise slowly again. You hurt his feelings, Annie said. I don't think so. Something bothered Jack. He looked back at the ocean book. He read to himself, the octopus squirts black ink to escape its enemies. One of its main enemies is a shark. Oh no, said Jack. What's wrong? asked Annie. Jack looked out the window. The water was growing clear again. A shadowy figure moved toward the mini sub. What is that? whispered Annie. The fish was way bigger than the dolphins, and it had a very weird head. Jack could feel his heart nearly stop. A hammer head shark, he breathed. We're really in trouble now. Scholars, that's the end of chapter six. We're going to stop there for today. But my special challenge for you is to figure out the motivation of one of our characters. It's not Jack or Annie. I want you to figure out why did the ocean squirt out black ink? You can go back to that part of the text if you need to hear your text evidence again. You're going to answer, why did the octopus squirt out black ink? When you're answering, make sure you say the character's name. In this case, our character's name would just be the, the octopus. Good. You're going to name what the character wants. You're going to provide your text evidence. I can't wait for you guys to figure out why the octopus squirt out black ink.